Hey guys, welcome to a really cool episode because behind me is one of the most unusual vans I've ever seen because not only is it very retro, very cool, but it's four wheel drive with a lot of off-road pedigree. And Connor has brought it to us today. Thanks, man. Connor and his brother have, uh, well, brought us, what, what is this? What is this vehicle? This is a 1991 Mitsubishi Delica Exceed star wagon okay hold up so, so let's break this down a little bit so mitsubishi understand but what's the rest of it explain that so the model is a delica which is short for delivery car and okay. then exceed is the trim level the exceeds the second highest trim level the exceed plus is the or the super exceed is the highest trim level and then the star wagon i actually it's just another name i think they just added on to it for the fun of it but the cool part is, is it's legitimately called the star wagon yes which is really really cool now this is, as I understand it, a four-wheel drive van that was sold brand new in Japan. Is that correct? Yep. And you bought this out of Golden. So talk to me through how you found this vehicle and what drew you to the Delica. Well, I really wanted an off-road van because I like camping a lot. And I was camping once in the mountains, in the San Juan Mountains, and it rained for three days straight. And there was a guy in a Volkswagen van again just up the campsite for me. And I'm like, I wish I was that guy. So I started looking for vans. and. I came across the Delica, and I really like it because of how funky it is, and unlike the van, again, it's a legit four-wheel drive with a low range and solid axles in the rear, and so I started looking for them, and I found an importing company in Golden, Colorado okay. that brings them in, and I basically bought it from them right off the boat, pretty much. So you mentioned that you paid about 17000 for this one, but they've really recently gone up in value and now you were saying well, they're what probably over 20 for something one similar? like this this one has just over 50,000 miles on it wow and the paint's in extremely good condition yeah and so this one's if i had to guess it would probably be minimum 25,000 right now wow okay and uh, and that's kind of just representative of what the van market is doing uh you know everybody wants to have that cool Instagram shot underneath mm -hmm. the stars. And this is a cool way to do that. Now, um, talk to me through kind of the platform. Is this based on a vehicle that someone in America might be familiar with? Yes, yeah, so this is based on what we know in America as the Mitsubishi Montero, okay. which everywhere else apart from South America is the Pajero. Gotcha. And so it's built off the Pajero platform, has the Pajero powertrain, and it's basically just a van put on a truck chassis. So it's a proper four wheel drive. Yes. Is it a ladder frame or is it unibody? It's unibody. It's unibody, okay. It, it looks unibody. It looks honestly like a mixture of both, to be honest. Interesting. Sort of like a Comanche, but... And it's solid rear axle. Solid rear axle, independent front. Okay. And it's got, as you mentioned, a true low range. Yep. And what's the transmission? The transmission's a four-speed auto. Four-speed auto. Box. Okay, slush box. I like that. Can you do me a favor? Can you show us how to get to the engine? Because it's yep. very, very weird. You can go in through the passenger door. <laughs> and then there's two latches. Okay. A latch here. And a latch over here. And you pop this up. Wow! And there's a little strap here that holds it. Unreal, dude. And there is your engine. So walk me through what we're looking at here. You're looking at what Mitsubishi calls the 4D56. It's a 2.5 liter turbo diesel, non-intercooled, and it makes power, but not very much. Well, what are the ratings? Do you know the rating? 87 horsepower and 148 foot-pounds of torque. That is, um, that is not a lot. No, it isn't, especially in Colorado. That is not a lot. Now, I did notice from a little sleuthing work, and Connor told me off camera, but behind the, uh, on the tailgate, there's like this little tuning company name. Talk to me through, does this vehicle have any modifications? So I think a tuning, a random tuning company in Japan got their hands on it. Okay. And they decided to crank the fueling all the way up. I just want to say, if you're ever behind me in Colorado, I apologize. <laughs> it blows just an unreal amount of black smoke. Like, there's dudes in second gen Cummins that can't even come close to this thing. Really? And then it also has such little horsepower that when I'm going up the big hills, I'm full throttle. And you, cars, I, they just disappear behind me. Like I'll see cars just come out of the smoke. <laughs> it's a great anti-tailgating device. But it's also a bit embarrassing. At first it was sort of funny, but the novelty is long worn off. Yeah. Like every now and then I'll be at a stoplight and there's a guy in a convertible behind me with the roof down and I'm just like, oh no, I'm sorry. So <laughs> it, it is an old school diesel then. So yes. mechanical injection, right? Yep. Um, and then if you are on flat ground, you know, cruising down Interstate 25, mm -hmm. will this do 70, 75? What's, what's kind yeah, of the speed I, range? I, I like to cruise at around 70. Okay. It can do 80. I've got it to 85. That's not 
something you want to do in it. Okay. It gets a bit floaty. But the real the problem is it's geared super short. So when you're cruising at about 75, you're doing like 3,300 RPMs. Ooh, that's a so lot. It's, uh, so I really only like taking it to about 70. Okay. But it will do 85. So if you're from Colorado, you know we have an infamous highway called Interstate 70. Yes. Which will take us up into the mountains and up to, you know, 9, 10, 11,000 feet above sea level. So when you're driving up I-70, like toward Utah, what kind of speed are you doing on the mountain passes? Um, most of the mountain passes, I'm getting down to about 45 miles per hour. Okay. There's one pass called Vail Pass going east, which is very steep, which occasionally I'll get down to 35 and I've been passed by semis. Okay. Going up that. <laughs> And uh, so four speed auto. Yep. Was there any other transmission option? There's a manual option, a five speed manual, which I wish I had because with this little power, just having an extra gear to choose from would be awesome. Right. But this one was so nice that I just I had to go with this yeah. one. I'm like, you got to go with it. Yeah. And I'm sure it's it's a pretty reliable unit. So talk to me about how long you've owned the Delica and what have you had to do to it? I've owned it for about a year now. Mechanically, I we've had to replace the um, the. Uh, thermostat because okay. that was locked open so the engine was always cool an easy simple job no no they put the thermostat in the hardest to reach place and my arms and my brother's arms are not exactly narrow enough to get in there comfortably so we <laughs> lost some skin changing it okay and then we had to replace all the rubber brake lines because they were dry rotted and they decided to leak while I was going down I-70. Okay. And uh, luckily I have a handbrake. Not great. Yeah, <laughs> no, not a great situation. Not but other than that, everything mechanically has been perfect. So do you drive this pretty frequently? I mean, how, what, what kind of use does this get? Is this a weekend warrior? Is it a daily? Talk to me about it's that. It's not quite a daily, but I drive it quite a bit. Okay. I take it on trips. I've taken it to visit my family in Phoenix. I've taken it to Moab twice now and taken it off-road in Moab. And, I've never had any issues with overheating or anything like that, even in Moab in 110 degree temperature. So wow. it runs quite reliably. So this is the part I'm most excited for because the back of the van is especially cool. So Connor, why don't you open it up and talk to us about what's going on in the back of this Mitsubishi. All right, let me close the hood yeah, first. Yeah, for sure. Actually, I'm not sure if it's called a hood, but. Uh... Yeah, what is it called in a cab over? I have no idea, a seat. A seat, let's close the seat, you sit I like on that. top of the engine. <laughs> That's pretty cool how that works. Is it, does it get pretty hot in the air, Connor, when you're, when you're driving along? It's you know? not too bad. You'll feel the heat more if you're a passenger right about here. Okay. But it's honestly not that bad. I think the engine's so underpowered that it doesn't make much heat anyways. So this is one of the most interesting back seats, I think, in the automotive industry because we have curtains, we've got doilies, we literally have chandeliers. Hop on in and kind of talk to me about what makes this interior so cool. So is this how it was stocked? What do you think that this is, this, this is, this is stock for the interior except for these chandeliers they put in it in Japan which I've decided to keep in this weird dome light but the seats are super cool they move back and forward and then they also swivel oh sweet so you can have a conversation with your buddies look at that and then my favorite thing for camping is they ah, they fold perfectly flat so if you take the seat you can move it all the way forward. Move the mat. Pop the headrest off. Move this up. This seat back slides forward. Oh, the rear seat slides too. And then they slide flat like that. And then this seat slides flat like that. And you can do it with this seat too. And you can fit a twin size mattress on it. Unreal. And then there's a bunch of room actually underneath the seats in the back so you can bring whatever other camping gear you want with you. So I imagine when most people buy a Delica like this to use out in the wilderness, like the first thing that comes to my mind is like rip out the interior and yep. start like doing a build out. Why did you keep it in this configuration? Because it's so nice. It's in mint condition and I just, I could not get myself to tear it out. It's just, I don't need, you know, a super fancy interior. I can just put a mattress on to get all my stuff in here, get a cooler in here and it works fine for me. Like I said, it's just so nice, the interior. I just, I didn't have the heart to tear it apart. And your brother was mentioning off camera that when you've got a passenger riding in this, it's actually more comfortable to ride in the back seat. Yes, these back seats are way more plush, way more comfortable. You can recline, kick your feet up on here. Their windows are tinted, there's blinds everywhere so you can block the sun. And then the other thing too is in the front seat, you're sitting in front of the front axle. So every time you're going over a bump, it feels like you're on a seesaw. 
So you're just going oh. up and down. It just it gets like that, like you're riding a horse. In the back here, you're right in the center of the car, so it rides just super nice in the back here. I do have to say, this is a really cool feature. And just like a camper, I mean, you can rotate the seats around, yep. face them. Do they come out too? Have you ever tried taking them out? Um, they unbolt down here. Okay. I have not done that. So it's not exactly easy access. And no. then what's going on? Uh, is that a door or is that just a side There's panel? There's no door over here. Okay. But you do have climate control back here. And you have cigarette lighter because it was the 90s. <laughs> and yeah, you just have all the controls back here. Which is really I love cool. that. Well, hop on out, Connor. Let's take a look at the uh, at the, the back. Does the trunk... Oh, it's got a ladder. That makes everything cooler. Um, does the trunk open up? I, I must, it does. Right? It opens straight up, which is... Oh, i got to unlock it. Here's the key, by the way. Which I love did that. Japan. <laughs> you didn't do that? No, I did not do that. I decided to keep looking. It's hilarious. I love that. That's great. The trunk opens straight up like oh my this. God. So you can see, with a folded flat, you still have quite a bit of room here, and then... You can still get stuff underneath the seats there. Can you talk about how this has got to be the biggest movable panel I've ever seen? Yeah, it's. I was not. Exp I was thinking it'd like swing open sideways, but that's nuts. It opens straight up, so that's... hopefully these hydraulics hold. Dude, that's like a six foot <coughs> <laughs> extension out the back. Yeah, absolutely crazy. What's that? Is that for the rear washer? That's a rear washer fluid right there. Okay, very cool. So with this kind of back open you kind of get a sense of how kind of tall and narrow this vehicle is so you mentioned it has four-wheel drive have mm -hmm. you tried taking it into the dirt have you tried to yeah it i've taken off-road here in colorado and i've taken off-road in moab not in any crazy trails yeah. but it's never had an issue with traction it has a this one has a factory limited slip rear diff which is sort of rare in these and it's got a low range so it does really well off-road the biggest issue is ground clearance you can see looking under it that like the second lowest point on the car is the transmission oil panel yeah. oil pan yeah which uh is uh you want to you don't want to hit that because then you'll have trouble right and then the other thing is it is quite a bit tippy it gets a bit nerve-wracking where like it'll be going over stuff and you'll pick a wheel up and it's just oh yeah like, it gets so iffy so i'm i'm looking at the the dash is like a pod that has like a little kind of inclinometer and mm -hmm. tilt meter are those actually useful? Have you used those off-road? So it has an altimeter. Okay. But we did the math and I think it only goes up to 8,800 feet. Which no way. Is sort of useless here in Colorado. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it has a thermostat for the outside and inside temp, but that's in centigrade, which is, I've gotten good at converting from the metric system now. Very and good. Everything, all the dash controls, everything's all in the metric system, which a bit of a learning curve if i see a police car i have to start doing math <laughs> you and uh divide by 1.6 real fast yeah. <laughs> for sure the grant that it's not fast enough to get pulled over anyways but still <laughs> what's what's the fact so you've had it up to about 85. yes uh, you've got to be revved out at 85. i though. would not recommend taking it up to 85. I right mean, it's it, this car redefines slow like <laughs> it, zero to 60 is measured on like a geological time frame <laughs> major world empires have risen and fallen faster than this car's reached 60 miles an hour that's too funny it's, so I've got to ask Connor, what's what's kind of your long-term plan with this? Is this going to be one you're going to hold on to? Is this going to be one you're going to try to flip? Talk to me about. Oh, I'm going to hold on to it for now. I really love it, and if I sold it right now, I mean, the way the market's going, I don't know if I'd be able to afford it back in five years. Now I do have to say, I mean, this is one of the cleanest vans, I, any van I've ever seen. Uh, you said you have a business that that kind of works through the paint correction of of all vehicles. Talk to me about that. Yes, my brother and I we run our own business doing paint correction for cars, so we basically take cars that are scratched up, you know, got pinstriping on it or just paints in general rough condition and my brother and I fix the paint. And what's it called? It's called uh, Paint Correction, it's called, or the business? Yeah. Our business is called Autovation Motorsports. Sweet. And we do work out of a shop called um, Black Mountain Motor Works. Nice. And... So if you want your Delica to look like this, Connor and Andrew are your guys here because this really came out very, very cool. You. We're talking about off camera that the kind of all black's a little bit unusual. Yeah, it's most of these are two tone, and this one's all black. My brother thinks that it may have been resprayed down below. You can see there if you look closely, there's some sanding marks which indicate that okay. they might have resprayed it at some point. Because it's really rare to see a Delica in all black. Most of them are like green and tan, or like blue and tan, or blue and gray. There's quite a few white ones out there, but I've never run into another black on black one. Did you redo the wheels too? Yes, we did. The, we powder coated the wheels. Okay, very cool. So um, the only other question I have for you is being, you said a 91, mm -hmm. um, 
did you have any issues getting it registered or was that all kind of taken care of for you? No, it wasn't. It's not too difficult. I mean, the biggest issue we have is going into the uh, DMV and trying to explain to them what a Delica is and then go, it's not in the computer. I'm like, I know it's not in the computer. It's never going to be in the computer. <laughs> but uh, other than that, it's not too much of a hassle. Okay. So it's, it doesn't like, can you get it insured? What, yeah. what I mean? Yeah, okay. we got it insured through, uh, I think we did through State Farm. Oh, interesting. Wow. Yeah, once again, we had to explain to them, like, it's not on the computer. I'm like, I know. I but, promise it's in front of me. It's a real yep. thing. Yeah, yep. for sure. Well, guys, this has been really, really cool. A big thank you to Connor and Andrew for bringing this out here um, because I've always wanted to see one kind of up close and personal, and there's just so many kind of funky, quirky little things throughout it that I think make it more interesting than your typical, I don't know, like a Spritzer van, right? Uh, obviously, a Spritzer van is going to have more room, but it's going to be way more expensive. This is cooler. And it's right-hand drive. Do you like the right-hand drive thing? Or yeah, it's fine. No, the only thing that messes me up is the turning signal and the windshield wipers are flipped. Oh, so every now and then, up. I've gotten good at it, but every now and then in a rainstorm, I flip the turning signals on. But <laughs> other than that, it's pretty easy to get used to. Well, there you have it. I guess it's not such a hard thing. Guys, check out TFL Truck and TFLoffroad.com if you want to learn more about these really cool delicates.